Hello, so I'm doing some repotting today. Uh, I'm just going to throw together a quick video just to show you how and why I um, repot some of my beans fly traps. Um, so, seven centimeter square black pot. I do like black pots, I think they uh, brings out the color of the greens more. You get a much better contrasting color. 100% um, sphagnum moss peat, that's the only thing I ever use for my beans fly traps. Um, I don't use any fancy mixes or anything like that, I don't think they need it, they're quite robust plants. Um, I've never had a problem with them growing in 100% pure sphagnum moss peat. A lot of people now are using um, different types of peat free composts. I have experimented with a few things myself, um, but as of yet, I'll just use, just use this. So this is one of the ones I'm going to be repotting. Um, some people might look at that and say it doesn't need repotting yet, it's only quite a young plant. Um, and yes, I agree with you uh, that, but as you do look in the pot, it's not just one Venus flytrap growing there. So there's one adult plant in the middle, and then there's going to be several smaller plants growing around the outsides. So when I start seeing this in some of my pots, I do like to separate them off so the younger plants have got a pot of their own to grow up in. Um, I do sell a lot of my Venus flytraps, so as I can divide them off and make more, it does help with me selling them. So I do like to just keep sort of one mature Venus flytrap to a pot, so when they start doing that, like I say, that's time for me to repot and get some divisions off it. I do find they grow better when they've got more of their own room and, and a nice pot for them to grow in themselves. This is a sawtooth. Just a rough label so I can keep track of what I've got. But yeah. So, turn the camera around because I don't have like a, a mounting system. Just got to balance it on a water bowl. Yeah. So, this is a plant I'm going to be repotting. So, stick the label up there. Get some more peat. Of quite much peat there, so I'm gonna just work it around the pot, separate the, the soil from the edges. It's got roots coming out the bottom of that as well, a little root coming out the bottom of there. So, uh, it's got a good healthy root system on it, so this shouldn't be this shouldn't bother the plant too much. Separate the old moss peat. All the, the moss growing from the top. So you can see how you can see how easy. Like just taking away the the moss peat, and it's already the younger plants are already splitting away from the parent plant. So that's a lovely that's a lovely specimen just itself there. Got some nice beautiful traps. Nice one coming up there. Um, so even that's got a you can see in the middle there it's already starting to sort of come away so a little bit of persuasion and there you go well, two plants there, nice root network on both beautiful, two plants so that's, that's, there's nothing else on that that is just one corn with one plant I'll stick that up there, that'll go in its own pot um, have a look at this one pull away some of the old dead foliage Nothing else on that one. Nice root network. Nice healthy top. Some new shoots coming up. That's a plant. Let's have a look at this bit. So you can still you can see there. Look. So you can see straight away. There's two individual corns there that have grown off. Probably come up from the uh, roots of the mother plant. While well, it's been in dormancy, they do when they when they wake up from dormancy. I find that that's when they start to produce little ones so they're using all the energy from the year before um, trying to expand trying to grab, get bigger and bigger producing little plantlets um, that's when I tend to pull them away plant them up individually give them more space to grow as the summer goes on I've always found it just get more healthier plants don't like to leave them to get massive and massive apart from some of my more um, my fancier specimens uh, like jet uh, alien things like that. I do like to get them nice and big, much more impressive plants as the as, as the bigger. 
Easy there, another little one. Come, nice beautiful root system, some nice white tips on tap root. That's one little plant there. I get the uh, straight away, another one come off straight in my, in my fingers. Nice little plant there. Nice little root system on it. This is how easy it is. I mean, you can leave them to to grow in the pots until they're literally bursting at the seams. Um, if you growing them um, just for the sake of growing them if you know what I mean uh, I like to divide them off I like to sell them on I like to get a little bit of profit so it pays for my hobby uh, sell some of them online and things like that and locally but yeah you can literally leave them until the burst at the seams until the corn has got so big that you can't grow in the pot and then you can move it up into a bigger pot uh, I've got mother plants uh, growing in like 10, uh, 15, 20 centimetre tubs and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and more mature and more mature get a lot of seed off them for, for sowing um, but these these smaller ones I like to separate off let them grow into bigger plants and then sell them on individually um, that's just how I like to do it Keep, keeps, keeps you doing something in the garden as well another little plant there so all them have come off, nice healthy root systems on all of them. So from that one pot, so from that one pot that I split, I've got one, two, three, four, and five. Five individual sawtooths. So I'll pop them up in seven centimeter black tubs, 100% sphagnum moss peat. And they'll go straight in the cold frame to, to grow over the summer. So that's them potted up, labelled up. Got another sawtooth I'm going to split there as well. That's got two or three young ones in it. See a couple growing in there, two individual plants. I'm going to split them off too. And a couple of these, great white shark there, split that off. Potting tray back up. So while I'm doing, while I'm going to pop this, I'm going to run through some of my tips and advice on growing the Venus flytraps. Most of you will already know this, but some people won't. Um, first thing I'm going to say is a lot of people do grow these in different ways um, a lot of people have their own advice and experience um, something I've learned over years of working in the trade that I work in everybody will do some everybody will do things differently everyone will grow differently depending on where they are in the country everyone will favor different techniques over other techniques of how they've been shown and how they've been taught this is just how I do it. I've had pretty good success in the few years that I've been, well I say a few years, I've been growing these for quite a long time. Um, but in the last five or six years I've been growing a lot of them. And I've, I've had a lot of success growing them, the way I grow them. Um, so, mine are outside all year. So I'm, I'm in Blackpool. Mine grow outside in cold frames. We get full sun in the spring, in the summer. I've got a west facing garden, so it gets full sun and my garden is a heat trap. It's quite warm in the summer, very warm. I'm, I'm very warm sat here now. Um, so yeah, it gets a lot of sun. And in the winter, it gets a lot of wind, and a lot of rain, and a lot of frost. And these, these guys stay outside all year get everything they get hit with everything um, mine don't ever totally die back some people do die back right to the corn right on the ground the leaves all die away um, mine just sort of get shaggy looking in the winter 
some of them do die back completely but it's quite rare that I ever have that it's, I've not had it for some years but we've not really had a really bad winter for quite a long time so they just sort of cease growing some of the leaves get a little bit rough looking uh, traps sort of stay quite inactive they don't really they don't have a lot of sunlight so they don't have a lot of energy to use on catching anything and um, they go to sleep have a good dormancy uh, they do grow quite late here so a lot of people's rule of thumb is around about Halloween time is when they should start going to sleep a lot of people put them somewhere nice and dark and sort of reduce the daylight that they get mine I've noticed still growing well into December um, and then it starts to get cold here uh, a lot of them are just waking up now um, it's April 19th or 20th I think now um, so a lot of mine are waking up coming into good growth a lot of nice traps coming up you see there Look, still a young plant but dirt on the end of my finger sorry <laughs> um, yeah that, so they're all waking up now I'm getting some good growth on them. Uh, I have grown them inside in the past. Um, upstairs in the west facing window. Gets a lot of heat. It's quite humid up there. I do grow Nepenthes up there. And I even have some Heliamph uh, Heliamphra. The American sun pitcher. Heliamphora. However you want to pronounce that. I've got, I've got them growing in a terrarium upstairs. Uh, I'll do another video on that if people want to have a look at my tropical terrarium that I've got growing. Uh, but yeah, back to Venus fly traps. I've got that. I've had have had them growing up there. Um, they do all right in the summer. They put a lot of growth on. Um, I don't really think it gets too cold up there though, so they still sort of grow right through the winter. It's not a good idea that they do that, as you probably already know. Um, they will burn out after a couple of years. It's just, the, the growth starts to slow down they really do need that winter's rest and where from where they grow in the wild northern carolina sort of practically the climate's very similar to what we've got here in the uk so they grow pretty much perfectly outside um i've got them growing in cold frames like i've just mentioned that's where the majority of my specimens all grow um but i have had them growing in um bog gardens uh, where they've been growing completely exposed to everything uh, and still a little bit slower growing they don't seem to throw out traps like they do under glass and in the cold frames probably just a little bit colder a little bit colder but they still get full sun i've still never had a problem with them growing when they are exposed they do get battered in the winter um, in my older cold, in my older bog garden, I've got a DCXL growing in there. It was a basically a seedling when I put it in there. It's decent. It's probably around about that size now. Obviously, it's a DCXL, so the traps are far bigger. Um, but that last winter wasn't really a bad winter, but the leaves completely died back. There were nothing. It it gets a lot of rain. It flooded it frost it, it snowed on it it was com completely white at one point it, it was full of snow uh, yeah the leaves on that just completely died but then it exploded into life all of a sudden leaves come, was coming out um you've seen in some of my other videos it's starting to wake up i noticed before it's got another trap coming out on it now so waking up coming into his growth really really well Uh, yeah, I've always grown them in, like I said before, in 100% spag moss, in the full light, always sat in rainwater or RO water. They are one of the more sensitive species to tap water, and the um, the dissolved minerals that you have found in tap water, you don't want a high TDS um, when you're watering these plants, I've noticed. The odd time where I have had a problem with my rainwater or my, my RO water, I should say, um, where it's dried out, or in the past where I was reliant on using my RO system at work and I didn't have enough water at home and they did start to get dry and I've had to use tap water. They are the species that tends to struggle. They, you tend to see straight away they will, they really don't like it. 
um, even the trap when they've got leaves up, um, they start to go brown and they really, yeah, they don't like it. No, being in fire traps hates that water. Um, if you've got nothing else, it's better than nothing. I mean, but you've really got to try and use RO water or rain water or um, deionized water. I think you can pick it up from most shops. Tesco sell it, I think. RO water, most of your um, local aquarium shops will sell that because a lot of people use it in marine aquariums and um, keeping certain aquatic species. Uh, so it's pretty easy stuff to get hold of. Um, I think distilled water even works. I've never used distilled water. Um, a lot more expensive, I suppose, if you're trying to use distilled water. I mean, you'd be boiling your kettle a lot, but hey ho. Um, grab one of my other plants here. So what if I just what if I just split sawtooth? So that was another sawtooth I've just split. So. I had two pots of sawtooth, and now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pots of sawtooth. So, splitting them off, even as young plants, um, I always like it. I get more plants, I can sell more plants, and the plants that are growing in the pots on their own become bigger and healthier plants. It's another one, another one I'm going to split, again, still quite a small one, but got seven or eight ones growing around it from the outside. This is Great White Shark. Just gonna again just ease it out, split it. Nice roots in the bottom, you can see it growing through the bottom of the pot. Lovely. Get that moss peat off. I reuse this, the moss on the top. Ooh, little plant there. Um, I reuse this, I stick it in the bottom of the pots. Can't be bad for the plants, can it? It's only it's only moss. Just rot now. I suppose that's what sphagnum moss be is really, isn't it? Yeah, no, let's see straight away there. Lovely little plant, baby little plant. Just stick him up. Oh stick him out of the way, stick him here. Don't want to lose him. Pull all the old stuff away. Like I said before, you will upset the plant doing this, but as long as you don't make a habit of it, you're not going to upset it too much. Well, then he's not going to die. I mean, they're, they're pretty robust, like I've said before. I mean, oh, look at this. So, just took out a, took out a little one there. A tiny Venus flytrap. Look at that one. Even tinier. <laughs> Proper baby little plant there. Look cute. It just adds to the hobby, I suppose, sitting here and just really going into detail, splitting them down, inspecting your plants. It's always good. You can make sure that they've not got no botrytis in them. Nothing's rotting. You can take away all the old dying pictures from the year before. Um, something I've not mentioned, I only really recommend doing this in the spring. Um, you'll hear a lot of people saying that, and the reason, you know, just, that's just come away, but that's got a piece of rhizome on that, a piece of corn, nice and white there, with a the root coming off it, um, I'll plant that. that, that will, that will come, that will come good. Um, yeah, in the spring, not really another, not really a good time to do it in the summer, when the plant's in full growth, you're going to disturb it, it's going to start to, sort of, um, redirect its energy, uh, into root growth and corn growth, you're not going to get a good, healthy, strong plant if you start messing with it when it's in its full growth. At the beginning, when these are just waking up and they're putting up the first couple of pictures, yeah, because then it's going to, it's got its chance to recover as the, as the summer goes on. It starts getting that sunlight, it starts catching them bugs. It starts to recover quite well. anybody wants to ask any questions just leave a comment in the section um, I'm quite responsive I do like to talk to people I won't ignore you another little one there so lovely so from that I got one two three four five Five and then a little baby one which I'll just put back with another one, let that grow on its own. 
So get all this moss on the top back in there, squash it right there. Top off the pot with some spag moss peat. it around make sure it's corms nice and covered by the boss peat there you go a beautiful little fly trap got its own little pot to grow in um, I'll pot up some of the others so you don't need to see this bit <laughs> 